Okay, I got kind of goofed up the last time I was working on uh, on the last segment of this video, and I'm redoing it the next day. I hope I can remember where I was at. If you recall, we were working with um, a a uh, we we had just developed a script, a shell script called Turkey or Turkey sh, and if we ran that. Um, as you recall, it would um, put a um, a log into an area in dmandel called logs. And as you see, I've got a log file here. I'm on the next day now, but um, uh, so it's the second of November, uh, 2011, and I've got a log file there, which I actually just made. We can see that I just made it. If I do the ls minus l command, and you see it just got made um, right now there. Let's um, um, uh, okay. Now what we want to do is, I rarely like to leave code that I developed for everybody to use in my personal area. Um, and it doesn't work at all if I've got a whole network of computers that I'm installing these on. So I want to install this into a systems area. On the other hand, I don't really want to install locally developed software into the main uh, uh, confusing. And when I install new systems, I don't know what to install. And so I like to put those into one area. And there is an area just for that on most distributions. It is, um, there is an area kept up on USR slash local. That is really primarily for locally developed software. And occasionally, somebody else will use that area, uh, some third party vendor, because it's a little vague on whether that's locally developed or not locally developed. But that area is really just for the systems administrator's use. And you can see in this, he can put in uh, software in the bin area or system software in the slash bin area. There's a page for locally developed man pages for your uh, locally developed software. There's a area for source code, although often if the source code gets very complex, sometimes it's better to store that elsewhere, maybe in the, the developer's lo uh, own area. or um, And there's a lot of fancy ways of storing so uh, source code nowadays. Uh, I won't go into that. If there's locally developed libraries, there's places to put those, so on and so forth. So let's move our software, um, which we developed here, to the um, um, to this area here. Now, I probably cannot do that as me because I don't have, sh I shouldn't have enough access rights. So I need to become root to do that. If I become root, I go over to the area I was working in, and I do a CP minus A. The minus A says keep all the same access rights and keep the ownership the same and everything like that. I copy Turkey into um, uh, loc uh, slash USR slash local slash bin. And hopefully that's there. Let's do a check here. Local slash bin. Of course, it probably was there because I probably already put it there while I was experimenting. But at least we see the, um, um, yeah. I actually already put it there when I was experimenting. Um, but this should be a new copy of it. Um, um, yeah. OK. Um, with that, and then from then on, I can be, uh, when I execute Turkey, well, Let me execute this, slash USR, slash local. Now, only I forget the bin directory, bin, there. And that should um, have changed my log file down here, logs. 
And sure enough, yes, I have a new time date stamp on my log file. So everything should be working fine. Actually, let me copy the log file here and just make sure that this is the guy I have. Um, Turkey for the second of the month. Doesn't do much. It's kind of a dumb thing. OK. Now, um, with that, let's set this up as a cron job so it will run after midnight every night. Um, I should be able to do this by typing cron tab minus e. And this will bring up my um, um, th my personal cron tables. I've already started to set this guy up. I actually set him up wrong, which is why I'm redoing the video. Let's look at the uh, man page for the cron tab command. Cron tab basically is a command. Um, let's we'll go back to that. Cron tab basically is a command that just takes us into VI and uh, it keeps all of its information in a text file. It takes us into VI and lets us edit that file with VI. If we know what we're doing, we could actually edit that with Emacs or gedit or any editor. But by default, it takes us into VI. Uh, and it's handy to know a little bit of VI. Um, the other thing that just came up with my cron, but notice when I notice that there are several man pages for cron. You'll notice that for a lot of commands, there are multiple man pages. Let's type a five. OK, the difference between these man pages is man one, I'd have to look this up in the, the manual for man pages. But man one is generally meant for user commands. And those are documented under man one. Um, there's another one that is meant for systems commands. There's one that's meant for um, uh, files and uh, configuration files. I think that one is actually five. So if I look at the man area, let's see, we had a area under local for man, let's, right? So what I should find is a number of different directories there. And what you will see is a man one, a man two, a man three, a man four, a man five. Um, the cron tab. One is under the man one in the systems cron tab area, or I'm sorry, the systems man area. Um, the uh, cron tab five is under the five in the man area. I just happen to know that the one I want is five. So I can type that in this way. And uh, if you're not sure, you know, I mean, the way I found that out was by looking at all of them. And eventually, you get used to which one you want. If I go down and read this, um, there's quite a bit to read here. But basically, it will give me the syntax that I have to use in setting up my man pages. Um, man here, uh, the, the, uh, something with a um, pound sign in front of it is a comment. Um, so let's see. Let us put in here run um, the turkey command five minutes after midnight every day. That looks good. Let's put a period at the end of that. OK. And um, if I look. In here, I will see that this is basically the syntax that does that. The first field you put in is the minute of the day to, or the minute you want this ran, which is five minutes after the hour. Um, the second guy is the hour that you want that to run. The third guy is the uh, month of the year you want that to run. If you put a star, that means run every month of the year. If I'd put a 1, it would say run in January only. If I put a, a 7, it would say it be the same as saying only run it in July. So you know, um, the f um, 
or did, is that the one for the day of the month? That's the one for the day of the month. The next one's for the month. So if I put a 7 here, that would be only run in July. So if I put a 7 in that little spot there, and a 4 in that little spot there, it'd say run every 4th uh, uh, of July. Of course, the turkey command, we probably want to run every Thanksgiving, but that's another issue. And the last one here is something like run on a certain day of the week. So it gives me the ability to, say, run the turkey command every Sunday, or run the turkey command um, every every first Thursday, or something of that type. Um, um, OK. Uh, I can also make changes. Right now, I want to make a change here. <coughs> um, this guy. Um, uh, let's replace this guy with a star, so it will run every hour. And let's run this a little more often than once every five minutes. Um, let's run this more like, um, well, that's OK. It, it's, it's almost uh, five minutes after the hour, so we'll leave that there. Now, over here, I kind of goofed up. That was the big mistake I made. What I really need to do here, whoops is um, um, whoops. there is put in the full path name for the um, file to be executed. The path statement doesn't necessarily help me here, because this gets executed before I get to the bash path uh, bash rc command. So I need to put in the full path name of my command. OK. Having done that, let me uh, type in capital Z, capital Z. That will save my file. Let me see what date it is right now, date and time right now. So in about two minutes, this thing should run and should update um, the file down here, um, the uh, logs slash um, this file. Let's see what we've got here. In about one minute. OK. Um, we'll wait a minute for this. Meanwhile, what we're going to do is um, in the next part of the video, I'll show you how to write a man page for this, uh, for the turkey command. Also, I might actually want to go back and rename this from turkey.sh to just turkey in the systems area so that it, it will um, execute as just turkey. I'm going to leave it as turkey.sh, but um, um, but if I was going to do this for a lot of people, I might want to do this as, um, actually, that's not close to five minutes after min uh, uh, five minutes after the hour, is it? So that's really not, um, yeah. OK, 20, se 20 minutes, or 20 seconds here. Ten seconds. Six seconds. OK. Well, here, um, that should have executed. And guess what we get? We are now, uh, the new date time is this area down here. So it did execute as it was supposed to. The other thing that the cron job does do um, is the only place it gives you output is by mailing you output. So if you. Um, if, if the whole thing blows up on you, one way to get back to it is to look at your mail. Well, um, it maybe only mails you output if it fails. I'm, I'm not sure. I never get my output by using the mail, so um, well, bye-bye.